Hello there, my name's Joe, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can generate several images using different prompts for each image from within just one batch. Now we can do this by using a couple of nodes from the Comfy UI Inspire pack and a text file. Now, just in case what I've just said doesn't make a lot of sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Q prompt now and we're going to run this workflow and hopefully I'm going to uh, generate four separate images. Each image will have had its own completely different prompt and then we'll take a look at those images and then we'll come back to this workflow and we'll go through how we did that. So let's Q prompt now. We'll generate the images, then we'll come back and break it down. Okay, so we've got our four separate images. Now, that's all very interesting, but why would we even want to do this? Well, one example perhaps is, suppose you've got a bunch of ideas, you want to give it a go, see what works, see what doesn't. And by using this method, you can put together any number of prompts and create these images, see what works for you, see what doesn't, see what you can take forward or just bin. Alternatively, if you're doing commercial word, if you're a graphic designer, your customer has a, pro a product they want to promote, you could use this system to generate multiple images of their product in different environments and then see what works and what's worth taking forward and what doesn't and is worth binning. So there's a couple of ideas what this may, may come in handy for. So let's move on now and take a look at the workflow. And we'll start off by looking at the default nodes first. Well, as you can see, all the default um, nodes that I've used in Comfy UI uh, are colored yellow. And I'll just quickly go through what we've got. So beginning at the top left of the screen, we've got the load checkpoint node. I'm using Dream Shaper XL model. Um, from there, coming down, um, I've added two extra nodes that are not normally in the default node set for um, text to image, but I've added the clip set last layer node, which allows me to um, set clip skip. I'm not going to go into this now because that'll take take me another half hour to try and explain how that thing works. However, um, I've set this to a value of minus two. If you don't want to use it, you can just right click on that particular node and disable it anyway. Um, coming down below that, I've also added the load Laura node and I have added the Wowifier XL Laura. Now this Laura adds extra details to images. I think it's quite a nice one. Now do remember when you use Laura's, usually but not always, there are triggered words that need to be added to your comments. So just bear that in mind. And um, this particular Laura does have trigger words. And so we'll look at that um, in a moment too. Okay, moving across, we've got our positive and negative prompts as usual. However, instead of the usual text box that we've got, I have converted the text box to an input. And to do that, all I do is just right click on the node. And if you come down towards the bottom there, you have this option. And depending on what position it's in at the moment, it'll either be convert input to widget or convert 
widget to input. OK, so I've converted both the positive and the negative prompts to input. And uh, again, we'll look at the connections on that in a moment. I'm not going over the, all the um, general connections here. I'm going to leave a copy of this workflow on my um, Dropbox so you can look at that rather than me trying to do, explain all the connections. But most of them are just standard anyway. However, moving on, we've got the K sampler. I'm just using a fixed seed of one, two, three, four, five. I'm using 10 steps and a CFG of two, which is recommended for the Dream Shaper XL model. And likewise, the sampler and scheduler are recommended there. So I'm using um, DPM++ SDE and a Keras scheduler. Denoise, leaving that one. Um, the empty latent that we've got here just above. So I'm creating images 768 wide by 10, 24 height. And this is just um, a batch of one. So we've generated four separate images here in, in a batch of one, which is quite nice. So those are the default Comfy UI nodes. And you can tell that by the badge um, that we can see here, which is the fox's head. Now, if you don't have badges on your workflow and you want them, you can just switch. You can toggle that on and off in Comfy Manager. If you just go into your manager, come down here, fourth drop down, you've got badge. And if you set it to nickname, you will see the, the icons. You've got about four different choices that you can uh, use. But let's just get rid of that. So that's the default Comfy UI nodes that we've used. Let's take a look at the two Inspire Pack nodes that we need. So the next thing we need to do is add the um, Comfy UI Inspire Pack. To do that, I'll, I'll add instructions on that in my comments to save time. Once you've installed the pack, you need to load the load prompts from file node and the unzip prompt node. Once you've done that, we'll move on. Now that we have our two nodes, let's take a quick look at the first one, the load prompts from file. You'll see there's a drop down. This is where we point to the text file that we're going to use to generate the comments. Um, the output from this node um, which is the zipped underscore prompt needs to be connected to the input on the unzip prompt node um, on the zipped underscore prompt input. Looking at the outputs on this node, we'll take the positive output up to the text input on the positive prompt. And likewise, the negative output, we're going to add that to the text input on the uh, negative prompt node. Now, before we move on to the text file, let's just take a quick look at um, a couple of nodes that I've added in um, from the Python Go's um, node set. Now, because I already have Python Go's um, node set already installed on my Comfy UI, I was able to do three extra things that uh, useful but not not necessary for this workflow to function so the first thing i did was i added my python goes show text node and by doing that i was then able to link this node to the positive um, output on the unzip prompt and doing so that um, lets me see the actual prompts being used so that's not necessary but it's quite handy Secondly, uh, again, because I've got Python Go's installed, I've just added my play sound node, which plays a sound when the images are finished generating. So I find that quite handy as well. And thirdly, um, with the Python Go's suite, you get the ability to change colors of the nodes and it gives you much more versatility in choosing colors. So that's very useful too. Um, 
So, yep, so that's what I've done with the Python Goes. Not required, um, but quite handy. Use it if you, if you want to. So let's move on now to the last element of this, which is the text file. Okay, so now we are in Windows Explorer. Let's find the um, text file that we need. Um, so at the moment, I'm focused on my Comfy UI folder. We then need to go into custom nodes. From there, we will go to the Inspire pack. From there, we will go to prompts. And from there, we'll go to the example folder. I will add the file path to this in, uh, in my comments. So when you've installed this for the first time, you will just see two text files here, prompt one, prompt two. Um, we're interested in prompt two. So let's open that up and take a look. Now we can see that this text file is, is actually quite easy to set up. Um, on this example, there are uh, three sets of prompts here. And the way this is working is we have a the word positive followed by colon, and then we just go straight into the first prompt. We then leave a space, then we have negative colon, and then we would type in any text we want to put into the negative prompt go down a line and we separate this set of prompts from the next set by using underscore. It doesn't matter how many underscores we put here. You'll see down here below, there's a different amount um, that makes no odds, but we do need to separate them. And then likewise, we'll come down. We have another positive prompt, another negative prompt separated by the hyphens. And there's a third set here. And that's all that we need to do. So, and then obviously save the file. So let's go back to, uh, or rather, let's go to my prompt that I use, which you may remember was called um, Inspire2. In fact, you can see the file name over there. And we'll look at what I did first before moving on. So coming back to the examples folder, what I did was, um, on the prompts to file, I just right clicked on that and did copy and then pasted another copy of that. And then once I had copied that file, I then renamed it and I renamed it to um, Inspire 2. So that's that's all you need to do. So just copy and paste the example and then you work on the, the newly pasted in copy. So if we now open up my Inspire 2, this is, let's just bring that up a bit. This is the, can I change? The, this is the text file that I have created. So as you can see, um, my set of four prompts follows the same style as the um, demo file that we saw. So I've got my or positive and negative prompts with the divider um, in between. I've kept them all the same size just because it makes more logic to me. Um, the only point of note on this really is that on the positive prompt, you'll see at the very last line is the same. And that is my trigger word for the load LoRa using the Warifier XL um, LoRa. So um, if you're using this method and you're using LoRa's and you need to add a trigger word, then you need to put that into each of your prompts too. So um, that's all I, all I did and I saved that file. Now it is worth mentioning that if you use this file and, and then later decide you want to amend it, that's fine. But because the file gets cached, um, you need to do a, a good refresh um, for it to work. And if you find that it doesn't work, even though you've refreshed your um, web page, then the thing to do is, is actually re rename the file. And that's probably the best thing to do. So hence, you can see that my um, file here is called Inspire2. That's because I amended the original file I did, which was Inspire1. 
And so I renamed it and then did a refresh on my web page and then that worked fine. So just you just need to be aware of that um, because the information does get cached on this and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to clear it. If that, and that's only if you're making amendments to your text file. So let's get rid of this and um, get ready to finish off, I think. So now that we're back at the workflow, just to finish off, uh, once you've created your text file and you have saved it, you've renamed it and saved it, um, do come back to this node here and double check that it is now pointing to the file that you have just created. If you can't see it, you may need to do a refresh on your web page. But other than that, you should be OK. And um, that's about it, I think. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much in uh, indeed for your time. Um, have a good day and goodbye.